Hey YouTube, Alan here. It has been a while. I was uh, rather busy after getting, getting back from the camping trip that uh, I did with the family. And uh, I have to prepare for a uh, fine art summit that I'm going to attend with my mentor, um, Alain Brio, in Utah in beginning of November. But I was thinking, um, I'm getting questions from folks on various forums, or fori, I guess it would be grammatically correct, about, you know, how do I navigate? What do I do when I'm out and about in the Jeep without cell service or potentially without cell service? And how do I know where I am? How do I know where I have to go? And how do I manage my navigation? And so what I'm trying to, what I'm going to tell you here is my approach. Your approach may be different. You may use a Garmin, you may use a TomTom -Tom dedicated GPS unit. I don't. I actually use, what I use is uh, my phone. And <clears throat> right now, the nice thing, I have, it's a little, it's a little bright, isn't it? Yeah. It's, uh, there we go. So I usually use Google Maps now that Apple came to its senses and allowed third-party navigation systems or navigation apps to display in CarPlay. Since my Jeep has a CarPlay unit, I use Google Maps. The other um, thing that I use very frequently, and I think I said that before, or showed that before, is... Uh, it's, there we go. Gaia GPS. This is Gaia GPS, and I usually... Uh, they actually added a new feature, so the green that you see there on the on the map has actually rain forecast for the next 48 hours. <clears throat> so it's nice because now you get a general idea of what the rain um, probability will be or how much rain you're going to get in the next 48 hours. So since I don't use a, seg a separate GPS unit, but I use my phone with Gaia GPS and Google Maps these days, I need to have um, local maps, which both Gaia and Google Maps allow me to do, as I went over in my previous video. I'm going to link it down below. Uh, Apple Maps doesn't do that. Apple Maps caches tiles around a map or around a route that you define. And uh, if you are outside of cell coverage when you define your route, you're pretty much out of luck. So that's why I'm using Google Maps and Gaia GPS. Gaia GPS obviously has the topographic maps. It has an overlay with uh, public lands and it has an overlay with the uh, motor vehicle use maps or the MVUM from the US Forest Service. So that's important that you have that kind of information. Um, but I don't rely on the GPS inside my phone. I actually rely on this little dude. It's, uh, there you go. I think this is the way up. It's called a dual um, GPS. It's actually an aviation GPS that a lot of folks use in their airplanes with um, iPads and so on if they don't have the LTE iPad, or even with LTE iPads, depending on how high you go, you just put that in the front of your window and it will give the GPS signal to your phone, which will then know your position very, very accurately. And the nice thing is that you can actually check with an app on the phone. Um, again, let me see if I can get that open here to where you can see. So here is the GPS app and it's not turned on right now, but you can see I get uh, my position information. I get how accurate it is. I can see um, Let's catch up. I can actually see how accurate my position is. It will give me what satellites are currently connected and so on. So that's all very very good information. So I would suggest if you do this with a non-dedicated unit, 
use a GPS like this one. And there may be newer ones, probably smaller the, uh, these days, but this one is probably about five years old, so, but still works, so why would I change it? Um, but besides using the GPS like this, there is of course also the old fashioned way of navigating. Okay, so now that we have looked at my primary, which is my phone with either Google Maps on roads, uh, including gravel roads, or if I'm really off road and I'm on like forest service land, public land, I use Gaia GPS and I use an external um, GPS like this little dual uh, device. It's an aviation GPS and again, I'm sure there's smaller ones available these days. But what is my backup? So when I'm in the Jeep, one thing that is always with me in the Jeep is this old, it's called a Lensatic Compass and it's a standard US military uh, issue since the 50s, I think. And it's basically a compass that, um, as you can tell, so it has some glow-in-the-dark tritium. And what you're doing is when you are when you need to get a bearing or whatever, you basically see here there's a little thumb thingy. You hold it and you use the little aperture here to get your bearing and then you with the uh, magnifying glass here, so there's a little magnifying glass there, you can actually read the bearing. So when I sit here and I look straight down towards where I'm here on the computer, that is a bearing of uh, pretty much exactly 300 degrees. <clears throat> so this is my old standby it's always in the Jeep. It just sits in the middle console and it's very rugged. These things have been known to fall out of like Humvees and being run over by the Humvee and they are still working. So uh, that's why I have this one with me and it's always in its old military pouch right here. But there is a little thing that is a little more modern. So, and I'm going to show you a couple of things. So when I'm, when I'm walking around with the wife and the dogs, and we're just uh, going about our standard um, hiking in the hills here in Iowa, I usually carry this one. And as you can see, I have maps for the uh, parks that are around here. This uh, here in particular is Willow Lake. This is Willow Lake Recreation Area and you see the red and the blue. Those, those are uh, basically hiking trails through that recreation area. And I just use this compass to get me a general idea on where I am based on the map. Uh, this is not a compass that I would use when I go out into the real wilderness because it's um, they call this a base plate compass and it doesn't have a mirror or anything. What I like when I go out into the more um, the more critical things is I actually like to have a compass that has that is multi-purpose. So this is my old one. This uh, is a Brunton. And as you can see, just like the Lensatic, it has a aiming point right up here. It also has an opening right here with a line and then the mirror has a line. So I can actually put this at about 45 degree angle and I hold it straight. And let me open this up. If you see here, see you have a little north and then you have the uh, blue line which is where you want to get so let's say we said 300 degrees so I'm going to go and make this up to about 300 and let's check okay 
So I have this now sitting here at about 300 degrees. I don't think you can see it, but just take my word for it. It's about it's at about 300 degrees or now I am going to just use this there we go and I shoot my bearing this way so Brunton it's uh, very simple it just has a barn that blue thing there and then the red that's north needs to go in the barn and that's giving you your azimuth or bearing um, so this is something that I was carrying for a long time and I still carry this in my um, photography bag as a emergency backup outside of the Jeep so this is my emergency backup in the Jeep and then this is my emergency backup in the photo bag when I'm outside of the Jeep but my primary my primary compass that I carry these days is the it's called a let's see here Sunto MC2 so this is the one that I'm carrying right now so again it has a base plate it has a mirror it has a v-notch here to aim and it has a notch down here to aim now this what I like about this one is and this is in my day bag so I carry this one with me whenever I'm out on the boat uh, it's in the Jeep in my day bag and then if I leave the Jeep I take my day bag this is in it and the reason I like this is because so this is a signal mirror and as you can tell it's much bigger than the signal mirror on the Brunton here let me open this again I mean you see the difference right in the two mirrors there's a big difference in mirrors between this one and this one and what you do with this one is it's actually pretty simple you you put two fingers you do a V and then you use this hole here as a naming point and then you aim at whatever area you want to signal and then you just move the signal up and down and left and right that will get the Sun to reflect from the mirror and it will signal your position to whoever is looking for you another thing that uh, just like with the previous one you set this to zero here so you set your little north and then you do it about 45 degrees and you take this again and some people like to do it like this some people like to do it like this it doesn't really matter I like to do it like this because my eyes aren't as good as they used to be and so now I can set this to where my north is in the box and then I can read my azimuth up here which is 300 degrees approximately so as you can tell oh one more thing on this uh, it also has a little magnifying glass here so this my magnifying glass can allows me to read things on a map like this so I can take this and I can read small print on this map or I can use it to light a fire if I don't have matches and this is the last thing that I carry with me in the Jeep usually depending on the area that I am exploring I will carry one of these um, so either a forest service or these are actually uh, from my last ex adventure when we were staying at uh, Molas Lake Park and, um, and campground and I was carrying this in the Jeep just so that I have an area map that depending on where I am and what is going on I can use this map to you know like let's say my battery dies in the Jeep and then my battery in the phone goes low well now I have this map and I can actually shoot 
either with my primary compass or with one of my backups, I can shoot an azimuth to one of the landmarks on here and then shoot a second azimuth to a second landmark, maybe even a third one if I can see one. That gives me my location at the intersection. And now I know approximately where I am, so I can now plot a course to where I need to go with my compass to get out or to get back to civilization, whether it's Telluride, whether it's Silverton, whether it's uh, Ridgeway. So I would strongly suggest that now maybe you don't need 15 compasses because you know the three that I showed you or the four that I showed you you know between my primary and my secondary in the um, photo bag and my secondary in the Jeep and then of course I have the very basic one without a mirror that I use for local travel you don't need all these compasses so just decide on a compass learn how to use it in conjunction with a map because a compass without a map it's usable just from a general direction but with a map you actually will be able to figure out where you are where you need to go so learn how to use a compass in conjunction with a map and you know use your primary as your primary chances are between these two chances are i will never have to use my secondary navigation however because i may one day have to rely on my secondary navigation i will do once every quarter i will do an excursion where i just rely on my map and my compass I'm not saying you have to do it I'm just saying it's a good idea to do it just so that you know that you are proficient with these two tools when you're out and about and you may need these because these are no longer available and you know and I'm not just saying cellular service because I have offline maps so that phone is just as good as a Garmin dedicated GPS unit or a TomTom -tom. there's one more thing that I would suggest you get and get familiar with and in the comments below let me know if you want me to go into the detail on how to use the compass to determine your position to determine the bearing that you need to go to go back to your car or to get back to civilization um, I'm sure too if you just Google or go on YouTube and do a search for orienteering or using a composite map you will find tons and tons and tons of uh, results so that's why I'm not too concerned about that because you can figure out how to use these things. I'm just telling you, make sure you understand how to use a map and a compass as a backup, as an emergency thing. And the last thing I do, or the last thing I use, is one of these. Is this called, uh, I believe it's called a Ranger something or the other, Ranger Beads or pace beads or whatever and basically what you need to do with these and I did that you need to do some pre preemptive work so you need to take this you need to do about a hundred meters or a hundred yards whichever you prefer so you go and you count your steps so you start let's say with the left leg and then you do the right leg you count one when you do the first step with the right leg and then you do left leg, two, left leg, three. And you walk on a flat surface, you walk 100 meters or 100 yards. You write that number down. Then you turn around and you walk back. And again, left, one, 
left, two, left, three. And you go on and you write down the number that you get coming back on a flat surface. That number, divide by two, add them up, divide by two, that, that's your average pace that you do on flat ground. Then use a moderate hill. And again, about 100 meters, 100 yards, and count your steps. Left, one, left, two, left, three. Write it down, come back down. So now that was uphill, now you're going downhill. Again, you do the same thing. Left, one, left, two, left, three. And you write that number down, add it up, divide by two. That gives you your average uphill, downhill. And finally, you do a sideways on the hill. Okay, this is similar to the flat ground, but it's not quite flat. So you do the same thing again. I'm not going to go over it again, but you go out and back, add it up, divide by two. That's your third number. Now you take flat ground, uphill, downhill, and sideways on the hill, add those three numbers up, okay? You add them up, divide by three. That gives you your average pace on a 100 meters or 100 yard. And that gives you an idea of every so many steps you do a, okay? You do 100 meters, 100 yards, and you do one. Do another one two, you do another one, three, until you get to nine, okay? Now you have done 900 meters, okay? The next time you hit your stride, you do one up here. Now that's a kilometer or a thousand yards. You put this back and now you know you went a kilometer roughly. It's not exact, but it's exact enough. You end a kilometer, and now you do it again. You count your steps, and you do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine hundred meters, nine hundred yards, and two kilometers or two thousand yards. You reset, and you do it again. Now you can see, you will get four kilometers or 4,000 yards and 900 meters or 900 yards. That's the maximum. And then you have to reset the top. Now you just have to keep in, keep in your brain what you did. Another thing is you can just use a little notepad and write down what it is you did and after you did this the first time going up the hill or going straight and back, up the hill and down, sideways on the hill and back, this is going to be invaluable because it is going to let you evaluate without any tools, without anything that can have batteries that fail. It will tell you how far have I gone since I started from back there. And so worst case scenario, you go back the exact same distance with the exact same bearings. Obviously you use this in conjunction with your compass on the bearing, but this will tell you how far you have gone. And between these two tools and the map, okay? These tools and the map with no batteries, no cell service, no nothing but your brain and your counting ability. You will be able to know pretty much exactly where you are on a map if you knew your initial position and the bearing you took off on. That's how you get yourselves out of bad situations where modern technology fails you. So like I said, if you want me to go into any detail on map reading, 
including topographic maps, how, how to read those, how to use a compass in conjunction with a topographic map. Shoot bearings, walk a straight line using a compass and using one of these if you don't want to take the time to run around on the internet and try to figure out what other people have posted about this. Let me know in the comments below and I will go over this in a little more detail so that you know exactly what to do. I may even redo my pacing just so that you can see how I set this up originally and figure out how to use the ranger beads with a compass and a map. But whatever you do, stay safe and stay dangerous.